G'day Gear Junkies, Jason here. In recent months, I've done a couple of videos about certain Boss series of pedals. So I started with the PH series, we had a look at all of those pedals. Then I did the CS pedals. Today we're looking at possibly my favourite series of Boss pedals, the CE or Chorus Ensemble series of pedals. In this video, I'm only covering the CE pedals. I'm not gonna be talking about the CH1 or the DC2 or the DC3. I will cover these, but in a separate video. But before I get too into this video, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. The Boss Chorus Ensemble pedals are their longest running series of pedals. In fact, they've had a CE pedal on the market their entire existence. Going back to the 70s, Boss's parent company, Roland, made a number of different musical products. Among these were some pedals such as the Phase 5 and the Jet Phaser. They also made an iconic amplifier, the Roland JC120 Jazz Chorus. This was the first amplifier to have a chorus circuit on board. Now around the mid 70s, they decide that they're gonna start releasing pedals under a new name. This is what became Boss. For their first release in 1976, they put out this the Boss Chorus Ensemble CE1. Here's my clean tone, I'm playing my Deluxe Stratocaster on the neck pickup for all examples. And I'm running through my Fender Deluxe Reverb and Vox AC30 uh, so that I can play these pedals in stereo. That's as good a clean sound as I've ever produced. Uh, the only reverb that you're gonna hear is from the amplifiers themselves. So let's hear some chorus. Here's the big boy, the Boss CE1. Now it's worth pointing out that the preamp here, even though the pedal is not on, the preamp is still engaged. So if I play a chord. I've set, the, I've set it to low peak mode, that's the way I like it. Now, the chorus intensity here is the only control we actually have for the chorus circuit, which is both our rate and depth. So if I turn the pedal on. It's just the best. What can I say? It also has a vibrato circuit which is not related to the chorus circuit. It has a separate chip. It runs at different speeds and it is broken up into depth and rate. <laughs> Really nice vibrato circuit, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. So this is the chorus circuit out of the old Roland JC120. Apparently it was initially marketed to keyboard players, but once guitar players found it, that was the end of that. These became hugely popular amongst session players and studios often kept these lying around because they just sound so good on record. Thank you. 
This is the chorus sound used by Metallica, Prince, Crowded House, and many, many more artists. The original pedal ran off 240 volts, which is enough to give you a fair zap if something goes wrong. It's not quite like the compact pedals we know today. Interesting fact, the C1 was the first chorus pedal put into production. Now it's enormous, it's noisy, and they're temperamental. It's also the best chorus I've ever played in my life. In fact, I would put this down in the top five bits of gear I have ever played. This thing is a box of magic. There are three aspects about this pedal that make it so unique. Firstly, it has a preamp. Now most Chorus pedals that have a level knob usually have that at the end of the circuit just to make it louder. This is at the start of the circuit, which means that when you turn it up, you're actually driving more level into the chorus circuit, which can make it sort of a little bit gritty, which gives it a character all of its own. Next is the highly rare chip inside this, the MN3002 Bucket Brigade device. This chip causes the pedal to have a triangular waveform, which makes it unique. Thirdly, the intensity knob here is both a rate and depth knob. So with it all the way down, it's very slow and very shallow. And as you turn it up, it becomes faster and you get more depth of the effect. Some choruses get ridiculously fast. This one, I think, stays within a musical range that can still be used all the way up. It has stereo outputs. Uh, but interestingly, it sends the modulated signal out of one output and the dry signal out of the other. The blending of the two creates chorus. However, you can still run it in mono and it blends those two signals uh, before it goes out of the mono output. This pedal was in production from 1976 to 1984. This pedal was lent to me by Verley of Past Effects, so I want to give her a massive shout out. Uh, these things are crazy expensive on the secondhand market and it wasn't feasible for me to buy one. So thank you so much, Verley. And she's also lent me a really interesting bit of CE gear uh, that I'll show you at the end of the video. In 1977, Boss released the compact series that we know today. In 1979, they released the successor to the CE1, which was the CE2. Now this is a fairly different pedal to the original CE1. It's a little bit more flexible in its chorus circuit because we have rate and depth so we can control the speed and the depth separately, unlike the original. This one has dispensed with the vibrato circuit and it's only mono. The other good thing about it though is it's much smaller and it runs off a nine volt battery instead of 240 volt uh, straight into the wall power. A few months back, I did a collaboration video with some other YouTube channels about our favorite boss pedals. The CE2 is one of the ones that I chose as being one of my favorites. One of the things that I explained on that was that the CE2 just doesn't have a bad setting. You can put the knobs anywhere and it will sound good. If I change it up a bit. The CE2 went on to be a classic in its own right, probably becoming the most copied chorus pedal of all time. It has really warm mid-range and probably a little bit less top end than the CE1, which makes it perfect for guitars with single core pickups. Cosmetically, there were a couple of changes over the years. This is one of the original units that had a silver thumb screw, had the large font here for the model name, it's got a slightly rounded enclosure and a black label. There are another couple of iterations of it. So for example, this was iteration number two, which has a smaller um, model number, but still holds on to the black label, but it has a black screw. The next one to come along was the same as this, except it had a green label. 
And then finally, it went to Green Label Made in Taiwan for the last about three years of its life. This particular one, this black screw black label one, is very special to me. This belonged to my first guitar teacher, and I fell in love with the way he uses it. I love the sound of it. Always just, I couldn't understand why the cheap pedals I was buying didn't sound anywhere near as good as this. He recently passed away, and this was left to me, and I'm very thankful, and I'm never getting rid of this. This is a part of my history as a guitar player. C2 was the first boss pedal to use the MN3007 Bucket Brigade chip. This was used by all of the subsequent analog chorus pedals that they made in the future. This was one of the first pedals that went to Taiwan for manufacture in 1988 and it was retired in the early 90s. In 1980, 81 and 82, boss start to move away from their two knob designs that they brought out in the 70s and start to make all of their new pedals come out with three knobs or maybe even four. This was no different for the CE series, so in 1982 they bring out the CE3. This was supposed to replace the CE2 and never really quite ended up doing so. This is unique amongst boss pedals for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it is the only boss pedal to have three knobs in a row like that. The problem with this design is that when this is on the floor, that middle knob actually obscures the LED, so you can't actually tell whether it's on or off by looking at the LED. It's the first Boss pedal to have a metallic paint finish, which does look pretty cool. And it is also one of only three Boss pedals to use this type of black knob, the other two being the BF2 Flanger and the VB2 Vibrato, which came out in the same year as this. Here's the CE3. So you've got your choice of stereo modes there, which I think is really cool. Uh, I'm going to turn it up both the speed and the depth. Yeah, that doesn't sound much like the uh, C2 at all. It's got such a clean sound. This is a more processed uh, hi-fi sound. Yeah, it's, it's very, very uh, refined. As I said before, this pedal has three knobs, starting with rate and depth. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking it's just the C2. It's not, it has its own sound. It's got a little bit more shimmery top end than the C2 and probably a little less mid-range. And the third knob here is basically just a mode selector and it selects the, uh, the stereo mode that this uses. So either having the affected signal coming out of both outputs or having it like the C1 where uh, the modulated signal goes out of one and the dry signal goes out of the other. Interestingly, if you put it in that mode, if you put your guitar jack out of B instead of A, you will actually get vibrato. So, interesting fun fact, you can actually use this as a vibrato pedal if you want.
It's a really different sort of vibrato too. It didn't sound anything like the vibrato on the C1. The C3 was not a massive leap in any direction from the C2 before it, so it really failed to gain traction. In fact, they continue to make the C2 for years after this came out, which is really odd amongst boss pedals. Usually the next iteration replaces the one before it. But this one uh, quietly faded off into the distance in 1993 after moving to Taiwan for production. And these are probably still today one of the cheapest Japanese boss pedals that you can find on the used market. They're very much an underappreciated pedal. By the early 90s, chorus had become the most cliched guitar effect. So for their next chorus pedal, Boss decided to make a more subtle chorus with more tone shaping abilities. So in 1991, they released the Boss CE5. Here's the CE5. That same year they also brought out the metal zone and both of these pedals feature these concentric knobs which give you even more control over your sound and I believe this kicks off a new era of boss pedals from 91 through to about 99 which I call the tweakability era where the focus was really on tweakability. So this has your rate and depth, it also has a level which is your overall volume uh, so sometimes when you kick on a modulation pedal you might experience a bit of a volume drop that allows you to fix that up but it also has a high and low cut on here so chorus being a bit of a thickening effect could sometimes overpower your bass so you can trim that off same with if you think it's a little too shimmery you can trim that off as well so it's a very tweakable pedal a bit like the C3, it's very clean, uh, but I have a bit more tone shaping ability with the high and low cut. <laughs> That's not cutting anything, so all the way down, uh, I will have cut both highs and lows. I think if you cut too much, you actually cut the life out of it. But it is important, I think, with chorus to be able to control both high and low. It can get a little too sparkly on top, so to be able to round that off a little bit, I think is handy. And it can get very woolly in the bass because you're basically doubling your own sound. You're gonna get a lot of thick frequencies in there. So to be able to trim that a little bit, I think is very handy. The 
There are two main versions of this pedal which look identical, but are a bit different on the inside. So the original from 1991 to 2001 was analog. Then in late 2001, they switched to making it as a digital pedal. Now they do sound very, very similar. I'm going to play both so that you can hear the difference between them. My friend Jeff from Stompbox Breakdown did a whole video on this, so you should definitely check that video out. I've got the analog C5 in the red channel of the switchback, and I've got the digital one in the green channel. Both pedals are set exactly the same, which is pretty much all knobs at noon, except I've got the depth up at three o'clock on both of them. And they're both running in mono. So let's start with analog. <laughs> To my ear, there's definitely a difference between the two. I think the analog one sounds like it's got more depth and the digital one just sounds like a more watered down version of the same thing. Because they converted both the CE5 and the CH1 choruses to digital, it meant that from 2002 right through to 2016, Boss didn't actually make an analog chorus pedal anymore. But that'll change when they re-released the CE2 as the CE2 Waza. To see how similar it sounds to an actual C2, I'm going to pair the two side by side in mono. I have the original C2 in the red channel of the JHS switchback, and the Wazacraft is in the green channel. Both pedals are running in mono, and I've got them set the same with the rate at uh, noon and the depth at three o'clock. Now this sounds pretty much identical to the original. It's a little bit more crisp because it's got a high quality buffer inside, which is great. The main reason I bought this pedal, however, is because it's got CE1 mode, and I'm fascinated with the CE1. But crucially, this doesn't have the preamp, which is a huge part of that CE1 sound. Also, it uses the MN3007 chip, not the MN3002 bucket brigade chip that the CE1 uses. So I might compare them back to back so you can hear if they're different or not. I think this sounds a little bit brighter than the CE1, and I also think the CE1 sounds probably a little bit more full as well. But it's definitely in the ballpark and I really like it. And another upgrade this has is that it has stereo outs, which I think is a very welcome uh, upgrade. The last thing I have to show you was lent to me by Verley from Past Effects again, and it is 
the CE300 rack unit from the 80s. This thing is just amazing. We've got the CE300 rack unit plugged in and we're still running in stereo. So this little section over here with the two green knobs, one of them is how much of the chorus signal is in my signal. So at the moment it's at halfway. So if I wanted to go full chorus, and all the way down it's nothing. And then we have just a, uh, a tone knob here, which I've got set in the middle. So if you want to take off those shimmering highs, So the controls on this are input level, output level, rate and depth, and a tone knob as well. And this thing just sounds so magical. So it's a beautiful, very clean, rich chorus. If I had to compare it to any of the pedals that we uh, saw today, it's the most like the CE3, I think. That has a very sort of hi-fi, very clean chorus so sound. Uh, it's not too mid-heavy. Uh, and I would say the same with this. It's, it's got a lot of clarity up in the top end. It's very full sounding, but it's very clean sounding. <laughs> I want to give a huge shout out to Verley of Past Effects, without whom this video wouldn't have been possible. And because of that, I want to uh, plug a couple of their pedals. So the CE uh, Chorus Ensemble here is a smaller replica of the original CE1 that uses the same chip. Uh, and they also make it in a smaller version as well. And they also do versions of these uh, that use the MN3007 chip, which makes it a little bit cheaper. I might put a comparison on the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page between this, the actual CE1, and the CE2 Waza in CE1 mode, if you're interested in that sort of thing.
So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can support this channel by going to the Middle Aged Gear Junkie store and buying some merchandise. I've left a link in the description and I've also left a link to the Middle Aged Gear Junkie Facebook page if you'd like to join. Other than that, my name is Jason. Have a wonderful day.